What day is this? August the 1st. Yes. Um, the Planning and Zoning Commission makes recommendations to the City Council. Any item approved today will be heard by the City Council at its regular meeting on Wednesday, August 23rd, uh, commencing at 9 a.m. <coughs> Excuse me. I just came from the spelling bee. Um, I was going to see if P and Z was on the list. <laughs> uh, uh, the rec if you received a notice for this meeting, uh, you also received a notice for the City Council meeting. Subdivision plats are approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission solely unless there is a request for waiver of escrow fees or construction. Only the Planning and Zoning, only the City Council makes financial decisions. If an item is denied, the applicant has 10 calendar days to file a, a written appeal with the Planning Department. The, the appeal will then be acted upon by the City Council. If you're here to speak for or against the nine, please state your name and address for the record. Comments should be limited to five minutes or less. All extensions of time may be granted upon the chair uh, upon request. And I'm, I'm making the same makeup mistake I made last time. The first order of business is to call the roll. Sheila? Yes, sir. Michael Carmichael? Here. John Landis? Here. Blair Swain? Here. Beth Whitney. Here. Jimmy Reed. Pamela Phoenix. Present. And David Hudson. Present. We do have a quorum that <coughs> at the conclusion of this uh, uh, meeting, we are ordinarily have a workshop to plan for our next meeting, and that workshop will be on August the 15th at 1.30 and is open to the public like all of our meetings. And it will be held in the Tyler Development Center across the street at 423 West Ferguson in the large conference room. The first order of business, next order of business is minutes from our last meeting. Commissioners had an opportunity to review those. Any correct corrections or? Mr. Chairman, I do have one correction. Yes, sir. Um, on item PD23-012, uh, Mr. Reed was marked as an I vote but he recused himself on that vote. So I just wanted to make sure that was reflected. Thank you. Any other corrections? Sheila, can you make sure that to her colleague? Somebody make sure that that gets uh, yes. corrected. Any other corrections? All right, is there a motion? Make a motion, we approve minutes. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to approve those minutes. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, if there is, in, in order to make the best use of our time, and if there is no objection, uh, I'm going to rearrange uh, the agenda just slightly uh, to deal with uh, items, uh, zoning items one, two, three, and four, and uh, reserve the table item until those other items have dealt with, been dealt with. I think it'll be a better use of the commission's time and maybe the public's time. Is there objection? Uh, there being none, the next, the, the first item is the zoning item Z23-025 <coughs> S&D Travels LLC. Caleb? Yes. Uh, good afternoon, commissioners. This is zoning case C23-025. This is a zone change request from RPO, Restricted Professional Office District, to AR, Adaptive Reuse District. Um, the adjacent properties to the north, east, and south are zoned RPO, and then the adjacent properties to the west are zoned C2. The applicant is requesting the zone change in order to allow the property to be used for both residential and commercial uses, or separate, um, which is what AR would, would allow. This request would not amend the future land use guide, which identifies the property as single family, medium, low density. This is the property there in question. It has a residential character to it, although I believe it's been used as an office space in the past uh, based on the, the RPO zoning. This request would be generally consistent with the area um, that you can, you can see. There's a lot of the AR properties there in kind of the historic <coughs> parts of town. And this is, this is fairly common, what you see in these residential houses that allow them to maintain the residential character with the commercial use. Um, 
of the tw uh, 18 notices that were sent out, none were returned in favor or in opposition to the request, and staff would recommend approval of the zone change. All right, thanks. Uh, uh, any questions for city staff? If not, I do not see that anybody signed up to speak on this item. Are there persons here who'd like to speak on this item? Yes, sir. I, I didn't, I didn't know it was, uh, if you just come. Just come to the microphone, sir, if you would, and state your name and address for the record. Uh, my name is Brent Wages, and I own the property at 518 Spring. And, and so is this your application? Or yes, you, sir. Okay. Any questions for this gentleman? All right. Now, if not, thank you for your time and, and presence here. Anybody else who would like to speak on this item? If not, the uh, staff recommendation is to approve. Is there a motion? Chairman, I move that we approve Z23-025. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve this item. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Items approved. Good luck with your project. The next one is C23-005, uh, Abby Dawson, LLC. Yes. Uh, Caleb. This is a uh, right-of-way closure request for portions of Crestway Drive, Travis Street, and Woodley Street. Um, this is a request that was previously approved um, by City Council on June 22nd of 2022. Um, however, because the applicant did not replat the right-of-way into um, the adjacent properties within six months, that um, <coughs> time has now passed and they need to re-close the right-of-way um, in order to do that. So that's what the applicant is, is coming here to do. Um, the adjacent properties are zoned R2, two-family residential, and R1B, single-family residential district. Uh, this is the property here. As you can see, the, those portions of street are not, not currently developed. Um, they're all undeveloped portions there. Uh, there's some flood, flood plain and a creek that there runs along kind of the east portion there that would make actually developing those portions of roads fairly difficult to do. Uh, of the 28 notices that were sent out, none were turned in favor or in opposition to the request, and staff would recommend approval of this right-of-way closure. Okay, any, any questions for Caleb? Uh, Caleb? Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I had a question about landlock. Is there any problem that this would become landlocked and the lots that are in there would be unaccessible? Um, no. <laughs> or is it irrelevant because of the creek? <laughs> right. So there's only one lot that would, um, that, that would actively landlock, because as you can see, this portion here is still considered right away, even though that is a large oh, okay. creek. Um, I believe the applicant either currently owns this lot here now, or they're in the process of acquiring that lot, which would then go into the rest of that, that development. So, no, it wouldn't really create any sort of landlocks lots there. Thank, thanks, Mike. I, I just had a question about the, the use of the property. Is that is the applicant here? I don't have anybody signed up I'm not sure. to speak no. on this item. Uh, all right. Uh, if there's no one uh, signed up to speak, the uh, Staff recommendation is to approve. Is there a motion? Make a motion we approve item C23-005. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to approve this item. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Items approved. Next is C23-003, the University of uh, Texas System. Uh, Matthew? Yes, good afternoon commissioners and good afternoon everyone in the audience. Um, this is an improved right of way closure. I almost said zone change out of habit. <laughs> the applicant is requesting the zone change to replat the um, right of way into adjacent properties. The west side of the right of way is adjacent to Old Oman Road. Um, the right of way was dedicated by Platt in 2002 um, it is the intent of the um, applicant in its UT Tyler campus master plan to um, enhance security uh, using pic the former 
if approved, Pickens Drive uh, to enhance security. Um, of the two notices mailed, no notices were returned in favor or in opposition to the request. Staff has performed technical review of the request and finds that it is generally consistent with the approval criteria. Staff recommends approval of the zone, um, of the right of way closure. All right, thanks. Any questions for C staff? If not, uh, uh, Mr. Krause, Andy Krause, if you'd uh, come to the microphone, set your name and address. Good afternoon, Andy Krause, 3900 University Boulevard, representing UT Tower. Uh, any, any questions for Mr. Krause? All right, so, thank you. Thank, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, so Piggins Drive, closing that and just going in on the north end, I guess would be is, is what's preferred. Is that what I'm looking at? No, so Pickens okay. Drive itself would still be utilized, okay. but it'd become part of UT Tyler's property, okay. the Board of Regents property, because it's essentially a driveway for our University Academy, our K through 12 that's over there, because we all are, the Board of Regents owns all adjacent property. So basically right now, it's just a driveway into our property. So we take owner, the, the goal is to take ownership of this drive, enhance security by providing a gate. You may, if you drive by the area, we put up fencing to help with perimeter secure, security of the K through 12, and this should just be additional improvements. Thank you. Yeah. All right, thank, thank you, Mr. Cross. Any other, any other questions? Thanks for your, your time and, and presence. Thank you. Are, are there others here who wish to speak on this item for or against? If not, the staff recommendation is to uh, approve uh, the closing the Pickens, the right of way for Pickens Drive. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve C-23-003. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to approve this item in discussion. If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Items approved. Good, good luck with your project. Z, next is Z-23-026. Uh, Apollino Molina, Molina. Matthew? Yes, this is zone change request from R1B, single family residential district to R1D, single family attached and detached attached residential district. Um, the property, um, the applicant is requesting the zone change to subdivide the property into two and build a house on each new lot. The adjacent properties to the north, west, and south are zone M1 light industrial and consist of uh, undeveloped lots and uh, single family homes respectively. The adjacent properties to the east consist of M1 light industrial zoning and uh, R1D single family residential uh, attached residential district and consist of single family homes and undeveloped lots respectively. The future land use guide uh, identifies this property as single family medium to low density. This request would amend the the future land use guide to single family and single family attached residential district or zoning. Uh, the zone change is consistent with the uh, Tyler first goal to add more residences to the north end planning area. Of the 30, of the 30 notices mailed, one notice was returned in favor and none were returned in opposition to the request. Staff has performed technical review of the uh, request and finds that it is generally consistent with the approval criteria. Staff recommends approval of the zone change request. All right, thank, thank you, Matthew. Any questions for C staff? If not, uh, I don't uh, see that anyone's signed up to speak on this item. Is there a person here who'd like to speak on this item for, for or against? Applicant? Nobody? All right, uh, the staff recommendation is to approve this item. Is uh, there a motion? Make a motion we approve item Z23-026. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to approve this item. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Items approved. Thanks everyone for your, your patience. We'll now 
uh, go to the very first item on our agenda, which is tabled from our last meeting. We need a motion to remove that item from the table. Mr. Chairman, I move we remove the uh, PD 23 012 back on, uh, put it back on the agenda. <laughs> Take from the table items. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to uh, remove this able item from the table and uh, include it in our agenda. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that brings us to uh, PD 23 012. Kyle. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this, for, this item is a request for a, uh, a planned unit residential district, PUR, uh, site plan amendment. Uh, the applicant is requesting the site plan to, uh, to, to show additional lots, uh, four additional lots on the, on the layout, as well as to remove the northern uh, future street connection. The uh, subject property to the uh, I'm sorry, the, the subject property, or the north, property to the north is zone R1A uh, and is partially developed with a, uh, a cemetery and then the, the portion directly north is currently vacant. Uh, the properties to the west are zoned for uh, R1D, which is single family attached and detached district. Uh, and then to the east is R1A uh, and commercial uses. Then to the south is currently de uh, zoned for AR, um, or AG and AR, uh, generally a residential property at this time. The, uh, the site plan amendment would not change the future land use designation. It's still uh, limited to single family use. Uh, the current site plan, or this is the, the, the property here um, as it's currently developed around the area there. The current site plan was approved in July 2022 uh, with 98 lots. Uh, and the uh, future street extension to the north, uh, uh, going north and then also an extension to the south, which would go towards uh, Cumberland Road. The, uh, the applicant is proposing to remove the, uh, that connection on the north side, as well as to add four additional lots. Uh, the, uh, this, there, there was previously a master street plan uh, alignment through this, this property here, which was a, which was a 60 foot a wide uh, proposed right of way. Uh, once that was reduced or removed from the site from the master street plan, uh, which means that it only has to be a 55 foot right of way now, um, that there was additional uh, you know, lot area that could be absorbed into, into additional lots. And so that's why you see some additional lots added here and then, uh, and then another lot due to the removal of the, the right of way for the street on the north side. The, uh, <clears throat> the future street connection, uh, as you see here in yellow, um, also referred to as a stub out, a street stub out, uh, is required uh, per the Unified Development Code, uh, per section 10-163. Uh, street extensions are required to uh, link subdivisions and provide stub out spacing averaging 1,000 feet, um, spacing uh, access to contiguous unplanned land as you see here, the, the dimension here is over 1,000 feet. It's about 1,524 feet uh, to unply the land, which is on the north side. The uh, stub outs provide connectivity and continuity in the public street network uh, with the expectation that uh, future streets, uh, that the future street extension will be continued with the, the next development. And that's how we have the connectivity between our, our neighborhoods and subdivisions. Um, that, Continuation of that street is uh, also a requirement of the UDC. So if that property to the north is, which currently vacant is if it's developed, uh, it, it would have to continue that street as well. Um, in June, 2023, the, uh, the city council approved a $493,411 contract for the South Tyler mobility study. Uh, that study will take a holistic view of the South Tyler area with a study area bounded by um, by Grande Boulevard to the north, FM 2813 to the south, uh, Cherry Hill to the west, Holly Tree also on the west side, and then Paluxy on the east side. The, uh, the study will evaluate existing tra travel patterns for that area, uh, analyze if any new master street plan streets are needed to accommodate the future growth 
uh, and also make recommendations on the prioritization of streets, provide route alignments and evaluations, and as well as provide <coughs> cost estimates for those, <coughs> for any infrastructure that's proposed. Uh, the study schedule is uh, 18 months long, but there is a goal of having a preliminary findings uh, and recommendations uh, early spring of, or uh, late spring or early summer of 2024. The, uh, the applicant has uh, indicated that the, an extension to the north uh, would be infeasible as, it, as the property to the north is a, a cemetery. Uh, to the best of staff knowledge, the, the portion that, where the connection would go into the property is not, has not been dedicated for exclusive use as a cemetery uh, through a plat. The, uh, and so the, I'm sorry. This, uh, this land is also adjacent to tracks within the area that are imminent for residential development. Uh, as you can see on the north, west, and south side are all planned for residential development. Uh, the, uh, the, with the South, south Tyler Mobility Study in progress and the lack of that, that property to the uh, area to the north being dedicated as a, as a cemetery, removing, removing the uh, extension street would not be justified. Um, it would inhib inhibit the future street connectivity within this area as it continues to uh, develop for residential use. The, uh, the Tyler First Comprehensive Plan recommends that to improve travel connectivity within Tyler that the city ensure that local street connectivity between subdivisions are uh, required uh, through the planning process and, th and so, or that's, that those connections are, are are stipulated with when these areas are, are planned for development. And so the existing plan for this area and for this property has that connection per the, per the UDC and also the Tyler First plan. Uh, of the notices that were mailed out to, uh, <coughs> to neighbors, the, uh, we did receive four uh, in favor. Uh, none were returned in opposition. Uh, staff received two responses from neighbors uh, reiterating their request to potentially uh, have Crooked Trail uh, on the southeast side, uh, where that connects to Cumberland Road, have that dead, dead ended or have, have a cul-de-sac uh, installed there to minimize traffic uh, through there uh, along Crooked Trail uh, with the intent of these other streets being made, other connections being made to Cumberland Trail. And so they, they, uh, they still want that, that plan to go forward. Uh, the currently approved, um, connection on the site plan uh, will provide more connectivity in the area, providing justification to consider, consider that possibility. Uh, removal of that stuff out, <coughs> removing of that, that street stuff out on the north side uh, would cause reconsideration of, of that plan. Uh, we also received an email from the, the HOA for, Crooked, for the Crooked Trail neighborhood there uh, that were in favor of the applic applicant's request uh, as they and the applicant have uh, come to an agreement in, in regards to not allowing rental units on some of the properties along Crooked, <coughs> uh, along Crooked Trail. Um, those are, that's a private agreement or, uh, between the, the two, uh, the parties. Uh, it's not, not subject to enforcement through the, through the zoning. So we're, we're not able to restrict the, whether it's rental or owner occupied. Uh, but I believe the, they may be able to discuss what they, what they have uh, what agreement they've come to and uh, and put that on the record. Um, <clears throat> uh, staff has reviewed the requested site plan amendment and uh, in the technical evaluation of the of the request, staff recommends denial. All right, thank you, Kyle. Any any questions for Kyle? Um, I guess my question would be when when this. Uh, study you think spring or summer of next year yeah we uh we're anticipating late spring early summer of next year to have some preliminary findings um the recommendations so that what that would do is probably provide a little bit more information on on how this what, what the transportation network needs are for this area um as you know south broadway has you know, con congestion issues and and so uh, 
there are there are other streets planned. There's a street plan on the west side of this of this area, uh, which is a collector that goes uh, from Wall Jim Street down to Cumberland Road. Um, I think the the question or what the study may may find is or may not find either way is uh, whether that is sufficient for the level of density that may be experienced in this area. I did show. Uh, I'll go back to the zone, zoning map, which currently shows that the properties to the west are the, the R1D uh, zoning, which is um, medium to high density single family attached, like townhomes. Uh, that, that is a higher level single family density. And then north of it is NR, which is our neighborhood residential district, which is also a, a kind of a mid, mid to higher density uh, district as well. So. That the study will evaluate all those and provide some recommendations. So, uh, yeah, so early next or mid to late next year. Okay. So, is the staff's, re um, the staff's recommendation um, to deny as a result of, of what, waiting on the study results? Is that one of the. Uh, not necessarily. Um, that the study may provide some some additional justification uh, on the applicant side of that, but the uh, as it stands, the the code does not. You know, we don't do a study for every time we have mm -hmm. uh, questions about whether a subdivision is going to connect to another one. So, okay. uh, as it stands right now, it, it in one one respect, it, it may be premature to to request. You know. Abandoning this uh, connection at this point, with all those other all that inf other information at hand, um, but that's not the that's not the only reason for staff's recommendation. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Um, I understood you say there are four new lots, but I only see one. Yeah, that the street extension there. Where are the other two? I mean, the other three uh, lots. Well, I, I think the maybe the applicant can show this better than I can, but I think when the uh, they kind of shifted around a little bit on the south side, um, well down there, and then also in that area there. So that, I mean, very small changes because okay. the they got it, the the developer got an extra ten feet essentially, uh, or, or five feet actually, uh, uh, where that right away was going to be. So oh, that may that may have I see. allowed that extra square footage. So kind of just to make sure I understand, the applicant's basically saying that there's a very very slim chance that this this road is going to go through here, so we're going to go ahead and close it off. And the city's saying, well, maybe not. We need to kind of wait and make sure for the good of Tyler and the traffic flow that that actually is for sure, and that's a big factor of saying. Yes. Uh, as uh, uh, Steve, as, as connecti connectivity is a major issue on this item, I wonder if it would be appropriate for our, for Cameron to uh, address connectivity just to generally, uh, if he's willing to do that. Good afternoon, commissioners. Cameron Williams, traffic engineer for the city of Tyler. Uh, so yes, connectivity is something that um, is very important for our transportation network. I mean, you see how Tyler has developed in the past. Is there's been chance opportunities where connectivity has not been made, and what that does is it forces all the traffic out to certain roadways, which creates additional congestion. So any time that we can provide that connectivity is important, and that's what Kyle's kind of stated with our ordinances and our UDC code and our Tyler first sets that precedent for what we. Um, to kind of back up, you know, with this South Tyler mobility uh, study, that's looking more at that broader South Tyler area. There's a lot of land that's yet to be developed. And so how do we need to create this transportation network to make sure we don't add to existing issues and how can we maybe alleviate some of those conditions as well? Um, just in that area alone that you look at uh, kind of from South Town South to uh, Cumberland, and from Broadway back over to the, the development to the what is undeveloped just west of here. I mean, you look at the potential of a 86 
percent increase in number of residential units that could occur in that area. And the number of units that could flood into um, that future collector and Crooked Trail and Lakeway Drive, 700% increase when you look at just that smaller area. So there's great potential for additional traffic. And so making sure that we provide opportunities in the future for connectivity um, and how that develops. And to put that kind of study on this smaller development is not something that our UDC is meant to do. And that's not something we would expect them to do. And so that's why I kind of see you see the city stepping up and saying, hey, we need to look at this area as a network and a whole, and let's make sure that we're making decisions that are best for the future and the planning and not just at a little, little small development piece. So hopefully that provides a little bit of context of what we're looking at from the transportation traffic network. I'd be happy to answer any additional questions that you may have. Thank, thanks for being here. Any, any questions for Cameron? Kyle, uh, did you all speak with the applicant pertaining to that specific matter and they were open to? Uh, we, we've had conversations with the applicant about this, this layout or this, this development and, uh, and, um, and the street connections and mm -hmm. things, things like that. Um, I think they were, they were aware of, of the, the plan for this, the study, you mm -hmm. know, they understood that. Um, the one thing that's changed in the past, you know, since it's been approved was there was that, the, the master street plan that had wall gym street go, connecting through this development that has since been moved to the west. Um, staff would just note that the, 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 the connection was always required, I guess, for, for the UDC. It wasn't just because it was on a master street plan. Uh, the, the change uh, that, or the, the, the net effect of removing it from the master street plan is that instead of it being a 60 foot right of way, it can be a 55 foot right of way. And so the applicant has you know, taken advantage of that, of that change already by getting additional square footage for, for more lots. Um, but that's, that's kind of been the, that's been the conversation. Kyle, help me with the extension of wall, Jim. I think I know where it is, but the sort of purple, well. Well, go back. Well, move back. Uh, it's the, hold on, it's the purple. I know, it was purple. That's not. Okay. That, that, is that purple sort of? Yes. That one right there, that's the extension of wall, Jim. Correct. Okay. And all, all that yellow area is undeveloped. All the, yeah, all the uh, yellow area is undeveloped. Uh, that's the R1D uh, uh, density of development. Um, what, what isn't shown here, again, is also the, the portion just south of that, the purple and the yellow, uh, which is the western half of the property to the north that's currently undeveloped as well. Okay. So Kyle, if, if, if the commission decided to table this in order to speak with the applicant, uh, specifically pertaining to the connectivity issue, and they would be open to, you know, replanting in order to allow that, um, then would staff's recommendation change? Well, the applicant's requesting to remove the the street extension. So, I think they're they're here to discuss why, okay, why that would be, why that should be done, okay, why, why that okay. should be approved. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, if if everything was stayed the same, um, and if the only change essentially was to, you know, because the master street plan changed, there's additional square footage for lots, and to add those additional lots, I, I don't think there was any concern about adding additional lots to the development. Uh, the, the big basis for denial here would be the layout not showing that connection to the north. Okay. Having that minimum thousand foot. Correct. Yeah. All right, Cameron, thank you, Kyle, thank you. Uh, any other questions for city staff? If not, uh, uh, two persons have uh, signed up to speak, Mr. Reeves, uh, you're, you're first. <laughs> I'll just 
to flip through as we were discussing. Adam Reeves, Tempest Development, 3930 Glade Road in Tolliver, Texas, here representing the applicant uh, redevelopment in the side of Rivers. Um, Kyle Cannon, thank you all for your information. Uh, I'd like to just give some color on our side, uh, the history of our report, <coughs> and then be available for any questions that y'all might have as we go. As Kyle mentioned, we've had uh, several discussions throughout um, the course of this application with staff. The original had connectivity to the to the north and the south, removing those roadways, as Kyle had mentioned, um, going through all those stipulations. I think the main code requirement that were not uh, needed for staff to get out fell in the of connectivity. From those recommendations, that was staff's recommendation for denial, but to come before you and let y'all decide and let city council decide if you agree with our reasoning for the reduction of each road, we need to keep it in. Uh, one thing that did come out of that discussion uh, with staff is that we did put the southern roadway extension and stud back into the plan. Thank you for the money. Uh, what we did to go above and beyond the current plan as well, those are right now just effectively left as green belts that would just, just stay undeveloped. And so it would be on, in the old case, where it was um, a collector road to the city or a future developer to make that actual connection into the site. So on the southern one, we brought that back in and we're, we're constructing it. So this is just a, an aerial of the area. The center is obviously our plan, kind of goes to the mayor light and some of the roadways in there. The, the request is really twofold. It's the addition of the lots, uh, four total. There's really only one of them that is directly impacted by this, this stud being there or being not there. The other three is really just a function of moving slop and easements around. So it, when it would come to whether that street was put back in, we would come before and maybe this is a staff level approval at that point only of three additional lots based on just moving lot lines around and fitting some in there. So, so the real, I think, need of the request is the removal of that roadway. Our high level contention, um, one, we don't think it's feasible with the cemetery north of us that, that it will ever actually be developed or constructed. Uh, as, as I'm aware, it's not, eminent domain is not allowable in the cemetery property so that it's a city project that couldn't be constructed without many different hoops and district judge order um, agreements and probably a lot of time. Uh, and then we feel there's a lot of connectivity in the subdivision to begin with for access. So, so as you'll notice, the, it's a little hard to see. There's kind of a hatched area on the northeast corner of our property. So those are existing grave sites that are there. It's about 650 feet give or take of what our, the 1500 or so I believe Kyle showed on a, on a prior exhibit would be. So if, if you go from there where there's, there truly is no way for us to have a stub out of connection to that land, you go, uh, it says average of a thousand in the code. So we're pretty much right at a thousand foot separation from where we could ever begin to make connectivity to a, another property for a drive stub, which would obviously go to the west. The, the red, if you see it, that's the old, collector layout uh, on the master plan, and that's what effectively the alignment would look like if this were to remain. That northern section through the cemetery is what we're moving, the rest going south to Cumberland is what ultimately would still be put in place. The blue is the adjusted master street plan collector road that's on there. Uh, so we're projecting those green lines are effectively, you know, the final layout of those will change obviously as you know, code through with their development, but those are the connections that we are stubbing um, right now to that location. The cemetery, uh, one obviously these are grave sites. There, there's, on one of those exhibits, it looks like there's pockets of the property that have been platted through, through portions of the land and, and the majority of the remainder has not been platted. So I think that's a contention from a uh, city standpoint with that code requirement. From a Smith County designation, the, the county, their general rules and there's a page in, in the packet about it, they effectively see if there's a grave site on a piece of property, they, they look at the entirety of the remainder of the properties 
as a cemetery available for future grave sites without any more uh, approvals or anything, not a normal course of business for the cemetery director. As, as they reflect and, and, and see that, that whole entire property has tax exempt status, status as a cemetery. Um, so with that being the case, our expectation, we do land development, we talk in cost per acre, cost per square foot, grave sites are much smaller, much more expensive cost per square inch maybe. So we don't think it's feasible that as a for-profit company that cemetery is gonna find somebody with enough money to, to pay what their normal business plan is to get them to move. Um, there, there's the pond that you can see that's the dark blue portion in the center, which has obviously there's maybe two feeder streams coming from the east of that, probably dry most of the time until it rains and, and siphons in. Possible wetlands, so there's there's some environmental impacts that would also come with that extension down the road and make that that much more challenging to go through. Uh, so for those reasons, we, we don't really think that that's ever going to get built. Um, and we don't want to build a stub that effectively just sits there for decades as, a, as grass that Invariably, it's probably not going to get mowed and upkept as well as everybody would like. There's just something else to take care of instead of another home or somebody who's doing that on a excuse me day-to-day -day basis. Along with that, the the blue collector roadway as it is that was obviously just changed from the master suite plan to that western area. I, I have two general assumptions of what why that is. Collector road is a higher intensity road, so it makes sense to be in the higher intensity used area. I think there's going to be some multifamily or more dense product than the neighborhood that exists today and that we're proposing as well. And I assume that somebody went through the same negatives that, that I've just described of what that cemetery land is going to be and says, well, this is probably, this is probably never going to get developed. So let's change our master street plan to locate that in a place where a developer owns it, they're gonna move forward, it's gonna be at their cost as they do their development and we don't have to worry about district judge orders or condemnation of that property or environmental that's specific to that site. Um, with those discussions, we've obviously been in contact with the HOA, with our, our neighbors throughout there. Um, the secondary and maybe even bigger impact than just the feasibility of that building, that road through there, is the increased traffic that it's going to pull into that subdivision. So I. On the connectivity piece, I, I would argue that it's worse for having that connection there because what you're gonna do is draw traffic into an area that has existing homes and residences where we're gonna put homes and residences where we're gonna have local streets, local sized streets, smaller streets that effectively become a cut through for traffic. So I know the study is going on. To, to me, that I think that's great that y'all approved it and it's gonna long-term pay dividends for the city for sure. But when I look at studies like that, it, it's focused on larger level roadways and how those can be improved or impacted by what's going on. Not necessarily the local streets with that hierarchy, local collector, arterial, state highways, Broadway, actual real highways. So what I would expect is they're gonna have a little bit of traffic generation that pops up on what we call nodes at each one of those intersections. But the reality is what they do is they're just gonna assign percentages to each one of these intersections. They're not gonna really look at the road per se or this one. They'll say there's gonna be, you can say simple numbers, made up numbers, but 10 trips to this intersection, 10 to this other, 10 to this other, 100 trips total. And they'll just adjust in their, in their formulas and their spreadsheets and the report how that traffic is gonna get routed When I look at Broadway as an as a issue or the, the issue being traffic, then, then what that generally tells me is how do, how do you dilute that traffic? How do you give secondary roadways options, tertiary options for that traffic to go through? But if you look at that hierarchy, the idea is not to go from a high level roadway <coughs> down to a local road that goes through a residential neighborhood where people are living and playing and walking and riding bikes. It's to stay on your highway, then onto your arterial, then onto your collector, which in this case is the blue. So when I look at this, if, if my concern is I'm driving on Broadway and I think there's a wreck or something slowing me down and I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut west on Cumberland and, and make a, a quicker route somewhere, 
I'm not going to go all the way west to that collector. I'm going to go to Dalton and head straight north to where that road is. And I'm going to defeat the purpose of what that collector becomes and what the intent is to focus the neighborhood traffic and the local traffic to it. And I'm going to be going through those neighborhoods. And we don't want that for the folks that are going to live there one day. I think with the HOA, that's probably their biggest driver is that they don't want more traffic coming through their neighborhood. Uh, with that, we, we know with him, um, Chris is here, the president of the HOA, so he, he'll obviously have his uh, information he can give you. But we've met with him, that's the traffic is concerned. We, we've um, given them a commitment that the roads, the houses that back up to their lots, there will not be any rentals, which is above and beyond what they currently have with the plan. So they have some protection there with who's gonna be living next to them and what they need to be concerned or not concerned about. Um, we're, we've talked to them about some traffic calming measures, which would be outside the purview of this meeting, would need city staff involvement, but something to help localize their roadway to even further mitigate and reduce traffic that could be going through their street as opposed to the other roadways that we're going to be building or ultimately they'll be there with, with the collector roadway. Um, and then there's a, a buffer as well on those properties, which is in the plan today, but we're still honoring that and trying to work with them and some of the residents of keeping that natural and keeping as much buffer area, trees, vegetation as we possibly can. While also, I, I think we've helped some folks with some trees that are worried about cleaning those up. So, um, I'm not sure where the time is. So, from a, a support, I, I have in, in the package, we've got seven letters of support that we've got. One of those seven being the, the Cumberland Place HOA completely. So, the, there's the HOA that's existing, the, the three tracks immediately south of us are more large lot. Acreage estate lots support our track. The, the Day Spring Church supports our request. And Jenico, which obviously owns a portion by Broadway, but also through the large development to the west and the north, also recognize the, the low likelihood of that roadway through the cemetery being built. The fact that they're a higher intense property that, that is where the collector really should go. Uh, they support our request as well. So we think it's the best solution for this little bit of neighborhood, for, for the community that's there. We think it protects that little enclave from cut throughs and shortcuts and driving traffic. We think it's not going to push traffic to that subdivision, but to push it from there to Cumberland to Broadway to that collector. Let those people get out of their neighborhood and get home, but not have people that are trying to be traffic right through their area um, very fast. So with that, I respectfully request y'all's review and approval of our request of the council, but I'm happy to answer any questions or provide more detail if you'd like. Uh, Adam, without, the, without this uh, stub out and a potential uh, additional street collector, whatever it's called, anybody that's coming in or out is going to have to go on Crooked Trail. So no matter where they're going, so they'll have to be on Crooked Trail. Today, yes. So the, the ultimate condition, which I would say that's how we really need to view that cemetery section because I think I think everybody would agree that that's going to be the last roadway that gets built in, in any of this stuff. Because there's obviously to the south undeveloped land or at least residential homes, two, two three residential homes there now. The blue collector road, which is going to be a developer driven one at some point. Our site, which we're obviously trying to build as immediately as we can, and then that cemetery site, which again, I, I think everyone would agree is not going to get built. So in the long term, there's going to be five ingress and e a uh, egress access points to that subdivision. Crooked Trail, as we go east to west, Dalton, I, I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of that one to the west, and the text isn't there, obviously, but that's a third. Thank you. <coughs> and then the two green that come through uh, that go to the collector. So there ultimately will be five streets that are in there. Y'all's code that has 300, or excuse me, at 120 lots, you have to have three ingress egress points to a subdivision. I believe that's your max code for that. So, so we're hitting the five. And I, and I don't, th I think this is a diminishing returns type situation where a sixth <coughs> entry and exit is not worth 
the potential additional traffic and conflicts that could come from that. Well, I don't want to, <coughs> I don't want to mean to personalize this, but I just see a lot of situations in Tyler where this kind of traffic situation is uh, pretty common and, and uh, without too many complaints or too many problems that I see. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to, to forecast what this actual traffic is actually going to be, um, although it obviously is going to increase. Yeah, I think, I think the simple answer is it's, it's obviously going to increase. I, I think there probably are a lot of locations, and in every city there's locations where there's ingress and egress everywhere you can get. But I think if you, if you localize this one to the community we're trying to build, to the, to the folks that live here that I believe agree with this that don't want more traffic coming through their neighborhood to begin with, this, this gives many access points for, for all of these folks to get in and out of their subdivision without much problem. It gives your emergency services multiple different avenues to go into and out of that subdivision to, to not have a problem with their response times. And I really do think if you, if you were to zoom out of that picture, that roadway uh, wall gym coming from the south, that becomes your straight cut through. That, that starts really minimizing the purpose of what that collector roadway is. And if I'm driving it personally, like I said before, I'm, I'm going to cut through, I'm going to cut straight south to get back to Broadway faster than I'm going to go to the collector, which I think is, it is against general traffic principles to, to do something like that. If I could change the subject just a little bit, I, I want to talk about grave sites. Um, the, I've been out there and looked at this, but I'm, didn't recall this many grave sites adjacent to the development. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are in somebody's backyard. Mm -hmm. They will be, yes, sir. All right, any, any other questions for Mr. Reeves? Well, I think the argument is very compelling. If, in fact, the, the grave site uh, hurdles are as uh, Mr. Reeves has stated, it, it does seem extremely <laughs> unlikely that, that that road would go through there. And the, the new uh, blue road makes much more sense to me and it serves the area much better because it really uh, touches a lot more high density areas like he's talked about. So uh, it seems to me that the city or whoever has uh, laid out this uh, you know, red line through the, the cemetery could pretty quickly say, yeah, that's like, that makes sense. But, um, so I, I'd just be curious if when that was uh, originally designed, did they not think through that that would be, uh, you know, a very challenging scenario. But now that I've, uh, what you've presented makes sense to me. Any other questions for Mr. Reeves? Don't go away. Yes, sir. I uh, also have a uh, indication from Chris uh, Clifton, Mr. Clifton, 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 Clifton. Yes, sir. I live at 8204 Crooked Trail, and I'm the HOA president for Cumberland Place. And we've met with SIDAR uh, recently several times just to go over this plan. Uh, we are in favor of this plan of uh, taking out the stub and adding those four additional lots. We've put several things in writing as far as uh, what the buffer zone will include, what the trees will be like. We've also saved a few large trees, few oak trees that are decades old that several of our residents were concerned about. And so we've kind of gotten further clarification from SIDAR on what that green buffer zone will look like and what it will look like moving forward. Um, the original part of Crooked Trail where we live, uh, like you said, is right there off Cumberland. And so uh, like Adam was saying previously, if traffic backs up on Broadway and you're heading north, or you're, heading, you're going to try to go through the Crooked Trail, and then if that stub stayed, you try to go up through Dalton and work your way north. And so our portion of Crooked Trail, as is on the original uh, site, has no sidewalks. And so uh, there's not really room with the current driveway status and other property statuses to add sidewalks. And so there's no sidewalks on our portion of Crooked Trail. 
Now, the newer portion that was the extension down the hill, along with what side are, is, is uh, building will, will have sidewalks, so there will be sidewalks in there. And so there are quite a few residents that walk, uh, walk daily. Uh, I have a son that's four and a son that's eight. He's out there on a bicycle or going to see and play with friends on that street. And so, yes, there will be uh, more traffic coming with this, the newer lots added, but trying to keep some of that major volume of traffic off Broadway and they're using it as a cut through to get somewhere is what we're trying to prevent. Um, and then, yes, so like I said, we're in favor and uh, we've met with them several times and have been openly communicating uh, throughout the process the last year or so. All right, Mr. Clifton, thank you. Any, any questions for Mr. Clifton? If not, thank you for your time uh, and your presence. You. Those are the only two people who signed up who I've been given notice. Are there others here who would like to speak on this item for or against? I have a quick question for Mr. Reeves again. And I, I, I think I know the answer, but this isn't a gated, this isn't a gated community, is it? It is not, no. Okay. All of these are just open access. Okay. The, well, I'm sorry. These are not the specifically talking about. There's one to the southwest just off of this page. It is, but it, it's kind of complex, and I'm not sure if it's that, that one to the bottom left of the page that you see there. Okay. That's, that's a gated, uh, that's gated. Hamilton, Hamilton, Hamilton Meadows. But not the portion you have stub no. south. I mean, that's, that's open, right? That would be open, yes. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, the, the red, that word stub is, is open. Perker Trail is it exists today is open. The two green dash lines that connect to the collector will be public open streets that get that connect to the other. So Crooked Trail and this, what is it, Lakeway Drive, that's the two entry points into your subdivision? Correct. And that's it? Right now. So right the now. alternate will be, the, well, well, my expectation, normal yeah. Gen Genico, I would assume they're probably going to be the next people to develop in this okay. area. So when they do those two so green, green lines will come mm -hmm. in line with the collector road, so they're going to have four. South will be next, who, if those folks ever sell or get in or not, that would be the next one. final one to ever be built if it was will be that connection to the north of the cemetery which we won't feel we have that one. but in the south you'll have a stub out that's correct and we're we, we've committed to building that whole roadway and that infrastructure today whereas the the plan as it sits today would just effectively be an open space green space area that whoever came through When was this blue line added? <clears throat> I'll default to Kyle Moore, but I think it was in the past six months or, or certainly the past year. As a result of the development that's happening west? Or at um, least somewhat accounting for that? Uh, no, I mean, not, not necessarily. So the, we're kind of talking about two different things. So the master street plan is for a collector, larger streets. That, that provides uh, uh, additional capacity to the road network. The connectivity requirement is another requirement of the, of the, of the code to provide connectivity between subdivisions so that all the traffic doesn't have to go to one or two streets. Uh, this layout, and as you all know, Traffic is the number one concern of our community and limiting the connectivity within an area that's being uh, developed or imminent for development uh, uh, without any proper justification would, would, would be something the staff would recommend against. The, the property to the north, I know Mr. Reeves has called it a cemetery many times, but the, the actual areas that have been dedicated and platted through, or de dedicated through plat have uh, have been shown to the east. I, I looked through the, uh, the pamphlet here and it did indicate that or the, it assumes that everything that's shown in green that's not on this map but anything shown in green is platted and therefore if there are plots on an area that's not 
included in there and it's not platted. That's uh, in, our, in my review of the, the, the land records, there, there are uh, plats that are not shown in the, in the appraisal district map <coughs> that, that show that there are areas de dedicated for cemetery for plots, essentially a plat shown plots. Uh, those are shown in the land records. They might not be shown on the map that they were pulling from, but any, anywhere that has a grave site is dedicated as a plat for cemetery purposes. Um, and therefore, the, the, if we can go back to the PowerPoint here, the, when you see, well, I guess he's gonna. Sorry. Yeah, that, yeah, that time. Um, well, actually, it's on this map. So uh, as you can see there in the green, I think the, the assumption uh, from, from the applicant here is that every, everything shown there is platinum and therefore if there's plots on a, outside one of those green areas, then the whole thing is a cemetery. But there's more information that shows that those plot, plotted areas or the areas with the headstones or the grave sites are, they're actually dedicated by plat, they're just not shown on this map. And so. The, that portion to the west, all that tree area, uh, to the best of our knowledge, and it doesn't sound like the applicant has any other additional knowledge to present that that area is not, uh, has not been dedicated as a cemetery, and therefore it is, as I've shown here, oh, shown here, that it is surrounded by area that can be developed for residential use, uh, imminent for development in that area. Um, and then also, I've I understood that there was concerns about the alignment and how that would affect wetlands and, and things like that and cut throughs and I, I think the, the response to that is that uh, there's no definite alignment through that area. I mean if you if you run it, if you show it through the, the pond there or the lake that's on the property there, um, that's problematic but that's not, nobody's establishing any alignment today and there's other ways to align that street so it is, it, it doesn't uh, promote uh, cut through traffic, uh, there's traffic el traffic common elements that could be installed um, to try to prevent the, the concerns that were expressed here today. Um, but what we're talking about today is, or what the staff's recommendation today is to allow the, allow the, the possibility for that connection to be made with knowledge that at this time that that area is not, not a cemetery. So, yeah. If, um if the cemetery does want to extend <coughs> the plats west, their plots west, right. would they have to get approval through the city and you could therefore require they leave that section open? Am, is that, am I understanding that? Um, they, no, I, I don't think so because the, essentially it's a, they're, they're laying out essentially sites for sale. So, so it's not? It's not for development. Okay. Um, and so if that was the case, um, and that was the facts of the, the matter here today, that you know, that would be a different situation. Um, the, the, the little road there in the cemetery, that is a, a cul-de-sac, it does stop there. There are grave sites west of that, which indicates that it may, may terminate there. Um, I don't know of any other future plans, but if there were future plans, then we would have expected that they would have been submitted through a, a dedication plat for, for the plots. Um, absent that, there's no indication that we we're aware of that it's gonna continue as a you know, cemetery going further west. Uh, right now, it looks like it's surrounded by developable land uh, that that would justify continuing the street through here. I mean, there, as, uh, as the chairman mentioned, there, there are many neighborhoods in the city that have developed, you know, sequentially that, you know, the street continues and continue more of like a grid pattern that you see in some of the, the, the areas within the loop. Um, that's, that's kind of the minimum uh, thing that's required to provide that connectivity within the, the city so that all those major streets are not the only way in and out of, a, of an area. So that, that by itself would help decrease the issues with traffic. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, are, there, are there others here who wish to speak on this item? David? Uh, David 
Nate Sosha, 120 West 5th Street. Um, I'm with Solder Builders, also with the developer um, uh, redevelopment. Um, if you look up, just wanted to kind of make sure everybody's on the same page here. Um, if you look up the health and safety code when it comes to um, burials and plats, did, did you bring that up? Okay. Um, just want to make sure that we understood that. And then also, one, I, have, I brought up a picture so you could see. Okay. Okay. Um, so if you look up uh, the health and safety code, um, section 711.001, it specifically says that once a property is dedicated for the cemetery use like this one is, um, it cannot be used for any other purpose unless dedicated is removed by a district court or cemetery is, um, is adjoined or abated in a, um, as a nuisance. Um, property is considered dedicated if one or more burial um, or um, are present or dedication of property for the cemetery use is recorded in the deed um, in the deed record. And so at this particular point, I think what we're trying to say is that it's it is dedicated as a cemetery. And so and there's and there's multiple um, burial plots there. Now, if, if you have the planning, that would be helpful for us to see all we have is this document. Well, even here. if it's Can we go back to that view with the um, 650 plots? Uh, I don't think I have that. <clears throat> it was up there. Well, I'd also add to that last part there is if, if there is, uh, for there to be plots now, I mean, obviously in the past there may have been you know, older cemeteries. Uh, but for now, for currently, if for there to be grave sites on a piece of land, they have to be dedicated through the and, plan. And, and they're not dedicated beyond the, the lot that, you, that, that we see, the line that we see. Um, and, I, and that's that's what I'm trying to determine. Is that 650 grand? That's, that's a city regulation, or is that, since it's county and cemetery, does that conform more to state rules state, than county state. rules? State law. Uh, so by state law, that if, if the county sees it as a cemetery holistically, then that would supersede and they could just continue their cemetery as is. They don't really see it if it was dedicated through a plat. And so for any new <coughs> new grave sites, I mean, these would appear to be new. If they're not covered under a plat, uh, dedicated as such, uh, and they're more recent, then if they are outside the boundaries of, of those green areas, which Again, are not survey grade, um, then, then they may not be, you know, uh, so, so Kyle, legal, do you know, essentially. Do you know, are the deed records for that cemetery, the, the entire ownership of it, it would be dedicated completely, even if plots aren't on the land? Like they have the 650 right there, but all the rest is undeveloped. I, I haven't seen anything to that effect. You have, okay. No. Okay. Okay. So the only thing that we can take into consideration, which is dedicated, is that six fifty. Um, the, the whole thing is owned I think by you have the same cemetery. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The, the whole property is a cemetery. Far east to far west boundaries owned by the same cemetery. Is yeah, that, that's that, what I'm trying to understand. Is that entire cemetery ownership Correct. deed dedicated? Can, can you, can, can, because if it's, if it's dedicated, that means that we wouldn't have the ability to put a street through there, period. Can, can we see that, Kyle? Or? I, I don't have that map. You, you guys have it. <coughs> that one. That one I, 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 don't suppose be, I don't suppose we'd be fortunate enough to have somebody connected with the cemetery here. No. no. So... <coughs> I, 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 I don't let me don't let me misquote you, Pamela. But but there, there's another picture, another chart with a line between that property. Where is? Can I see that? Because 
that's the one I was talking about. The 650 yeah. dedicated yeah. versus the entire. Sure. Mm -hmm. Kyle, Kyle, there's there there's the note that's on the screen just then had had some verbiage in the upper left hand corner mm -hmm. that was not complete. Can I see that again? Not this page. It was just on the screen. Oh, this one. It's this one right there. Yeah. This. Yeah. Okay, but but uh, may, I, may I just read this? So the green area is that it's in the within this green area is planted outside of the green area, according to this statement, is not planted. Is that is is that our understanding? According to that statement. Yeah. According to that statement. Yeah. Uh, what I what I mentioned is that there there are deeds there are land records that may not be re reflected here on this map. So everything that's shown in green here is not necessarily everything that's planted. Um, so uh, from what I can tell, when I reviewed it, I, I did find uh, a dedication plat for this, this area. It's tough to show. Pretty much the, the grave sites. East you're, of that. You're, now, you're, you're moving this, but yeah. they can't see the thing. I mean, unfortunately, we kind of have, uh, we have the principle that we need to make sure we make the best decision for the city of Tyler moving forward to, to have, to develop it and to have roads that, that serve the, the best purpose. But then we just have the impractical piece in my mind that it's going to go through that cemetery when there are other options around there to me to get a bigger bang for your buck. And so it'd be great if, Someone would just say, it's very unlikely we're going to go through all the hurdles to go through the cemetery when we have this great option to the west. But I know I don't have all the pieces of the puzzle to be emphatic about that. And in my, in my opinion, I, I, I don't think we have all the information that's needed because if the entire plat of ownership that the cemetery has um, is has that dedication, then there's no way that a street could be created in there, period. And that, that pretty much solves. For, from our view, that's what it is. From, from what David had read, property is considered dedicated to form more burials are present. So I, I don't have the other information that Kyle's mentioning on where boundaries are, but the information that we do have, there are absolutely are grave sites outside of, of those boundaries, which this is our, that's a city's exhibit, our exhibits is the exact same one. So that, that infers to me the best analogy we have. So this is what's well, going on. Someone right. should have pulled a uh, deed my record. My expectation, excuse me, I apologize for No, somebody should have pulled a deed record. And I'm, oh, not doubting, I, I'm not doubting what Kyle's saying, but even mm -hmm. even if Kyle, mm -hmm. you know, he's correct, I, I still feel like there, it is an unlikely route to take given the other options. Well, I was going to say is if there's any, if these are outside of a planted area, then by state law, they should have been in a planted area. They should so, be. Because they're, they're not older, plot, or older grave sites. So if, you know, based off what I've, I've seen myself, but also uh, if, if there are any outside of a, a dedicated planted area, though those are, they're not in accordance with state law. So to, to the, the point about it being a cemetery, I think the point is, uh, at least from the staff's perspective, is that the entire area here is not a cemetery. That's, that's the staff's pers perspective, but it's not your perspective. It, it's not. I think, to me, and I, obviously I, I don't know the history of it, but, but it leads me to believe that there's a decision collectively from the city that that's going to be very difficult to get that road right through, which is what was the impetus for the master street plan that shifted that collector to the west. Push it on, that. Sorry. On, on the other on the other hand, if 
we close this proposed uh, collector, this uh, uh, stub out, mm -hmm. and it is late, later <clears throat> found to be possible to put a street through, we will foreclose uh, our opportunity, at least for that time frame, uh, to, to, uh, to do that. So in my mind, it's a question of whether, I, I agree with Mr. Swain, he's absolutely right, <clears throat> but there also the issue is whether or not we want to preserve this as an option uh, uh, because we know this area is going to be studied. We know there's going to be con uh, additional work. Uh, and at some point in the future, we may find that uh, we really wish we had that stuff. Out. Yeah, I, I would. My response would be what that will do is push more traffic through that area. That there is, there should be substantial. When this area is built out with Cumberland and Broadway with that collector, there should be substantial connectivity to for for residents and for emergency services and normal city services to get in and out of this area, above and beyond the three which is required access points. And there will be five in this area. The 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 folks that live here, I don't, I don't live in Tyler. The folks that live here also agree and support our case to remove that because. The negative for them, which I think somebody mentioned earlier, was traffic is a concern in the city. So, so we have a, a possibility of a roadway maybe one day being pushed in that cemetery. We have the knowledge that folks that live there today don't want more traffic coming through their neighborhood. They don't want to institute a possibility for a, a shortcut cut through that is going to take traffic away from the collector from Cumberland and push it in a local street, which from a from a traffic engineering standpoint is not what should occur. The, the traffic should be pushed and directed towards those larger roadways. So I think in, in the spirit of what Tyler wants, that there is the connectivity, which is great. I agree with you on the safety part. And I think there's, there's enough access here that this makes sense to remove that. And, and then with traffic, there's, there's five year studies. They might be going 25 years studied in the, in the study that's ongoing. That's, standard normal traffic engineering routines, but obviously we don't know what we're doing next year, let alone 25 years from now. So those are, they're all predicated on the best assumptions and intelligent assumptions that you can make. To me, this definitively says that's not there. The folks that live there don't want that traffic. Let's figure out a solution elsewhere instead of driving that through their properties. Thank you, Mr. Reeves. Thank you. Are there other persons here who'd like to, uh, th there comes a time uh, when we can bring, try to bring this uh, issue to a close. Are there others who would like to speak on, on this item or, or questions for the city staff or comments from commissioners? All right, if, if not, uh, the, uh, the uh, table item which we've taken off the table <coughs> is uh, to consider recommending uh, Closing this, uh, basically clo closing the stub out uh, for, uh, what is that? What's that street? Brent? Uh, Dalton. Bolton, yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's the staff's uh, recommendation. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I make the motion to approve PD 23-012. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve uh, this uh, closure and to adopt the, cert the, the uh, staff's recommendation. Uh, staff's recommendation was to, was to deny. deny. Didn't it? Oh. No. I just want to make that clear. You're, you're, he's, approving, he's, he's approving to not. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's fine. <laughs> clarify your motion, John. Let me help, <laughs> help me so that we, we leave here uh, understanding what we're doing. I'm, I'm voting to approve the item. Which is the staff's recommendation. No, no, it's not. You're no. We're, 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 at, we're, in, we're at war right now. Okay. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're mo and I'm, don't let me put words in your mouth, John, but your, your motion is to deny the staff's recommendation and to approve the change. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Second. Our, and the, and, and, and uh, uh, Pamela's mo uh, seconded that. Thanks. Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Well, let, let me get, let me, uh, let me, we have a motion and a second. Uh, is there any discussion? 
I have one more question for this is important. To me, this is important. Yeah, I, I really like to hear a com very conflicted here on this because I agree with Mr. Chairman that you know you never want to quit a job until you have another one. <laughs> And that's kind of what we're voting here for. I'd really like to hear if there's a final compelling argument from the city, what the possible consequences are if we if we vote to close this. That would help me with this decision because I I feel like there's another great option. But what I'm asking is, are we missing something here that we need to know? If I can, you just give you the traffic perspective. Um, at the end of the day, we as staff give you our technical recommendation. Um, you get to hear from the citizens and what, what you think is best to do. Um, from a traffic engineer uh, perspective, so I deal with citizen calls weekly, monthly about speeding concerns, traffic volume concerns in the neighborhoods. So we want to try to do whatever we can to minimize. And so when you look at, yes, I, I hear those concerns, but connectivity is one thing that can reduce that, but doing it in an appropriate way in how we lay out our streets. Um, could kind of give you an example of that, just to the west of here, um, you have Maple Lane, which is off of Holly Tree and Dooling Oaks. That was supposed to be punched through. It was cul de sac off as a, um, as a request from development. And ultimately what that does is that forces more traffic across residential lots that weren't gonna have that traffic before out on the Holly Tree or Dueling Oaks. And so therefore, because you've taken away connectivity, you are now actually focusing that traffic into more directed areas. So that is one reason the connectivity argument is there. Um, the other piece of this is Again, um, I could give you the whole history on that master street plan of where we went from line to line to line of how it got there, a little bit longer discussion. Um, but at the end of the day, what you don't have is, is that one collector, that blue line, is that enough? And to ask this development to answer that question is really beyond what our UDC and our ordinance is meant to do. So that's where we're stepping in with this South Tyler Mobility to study to ask that one of those questions is, is that blue line enough? And if it is, great. Now we know we've gone through the analysis, the long-term vision to, to make that decision. If it's not, what do we need? This is one of those pieces. Um, and, and to be frank with you, to put, put it also in perspective, with this stub out, we're talking about one lot that this development is looking to, to get back, which totally understand from a development standpoint. Um, I will say we've already made some compromises with this layout. If you look to the west, there's those T hammerheads. Typically we would have a cul-de-sac there because those T hammerheads are gonna cause us issues with our waste collection, parking. I can almost tell you I'm probably gonna, in a couple years, get a request for no parking signs because of people parking and having to back in and out of driveways. So those are some compromises that we've made to provide opportunity for more lots in this layout. Um, and again, you're talking about one lot in the grand scheme of things. And when we're looking at the overall transportation network and what we need to do for this area. Um, from a capacity standpoint in the area, Broadway is what Broadway is. You are seeing Tech Stop push forward with some expansion of three lanes south of Cumberland. but there's been looked at extensively from overpasses and different things that have been shot down that aren't gonna happen in Tyler on Broadway. Cumberland, it's developing. Is it gonna turn into a Broadway? And so how are these residents going to get in and out? If they, you know, um, if this does develop to the north with that, you know, cemetery decides not to move forward, that gives people additional connectivity up to uh, Fig Pen, uh, Mueller Garden, Heritage, Southtown, to get up there, or for traffic to get further south. So there are, I think, a bigger picture from a transportation perspective, and that's why we have pushed forward with this South Tyler Mobility Study to answer those questions, to look at the overall um, traffic flow, to do the modeling, the long-term, looking at that, that has not been done to date. 
so that we can make those educational speakers. Hopefully that provides a little bit more. Thank, thank you very much. We <coughs> sort of interrupted the vote here. Mr. Swain, do you feel like you've... Thank you. You feel... Yes. Can, can, I, make, can I make one comment? At the, in, in addition to Blair, um, my only concern is from a legal standpoint, if the entire acreage that the cemetery owns is dedicated, then you wouldn't have the ability to put a street in there anyway. So if we left the stuff out of hand and we couldn't utilize it, then it just have a lot sitting there that could have been used. But that's my only point, whether or not the yeah, entire that. acreage that the cemetery owns is dedicated or if only where the plots are are dedicated. And again, we're interrupting the vote, but that's, those, those are, yes, sir. To, to clarify, they've been absolutely correct in the state of Texas. So that is a cemetery that is for profit, corporation, to my knowledge. Okay. You cannot, eminent domain, take that property. So any roadway that goes there in the future has to be worked out willingly from that cemetery. Um, so okay. that hopefully kind of gives you a perspective. I will tell you, as part of that South Tyler Mobility Study, we have scope in there to work with landowners, property owners, to make those have that understanding to get some of those answers and be able to make that educated decision. Gotcha. Yes. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you, Cameron. At, at this point, we're, we're sort of interrupting a vote. There's been a motion and, and a second. Uh, uh, Sheila? Yes, sir. Will you call the roll, please? for the motion, correct? Yes. Mr. Landis, motion is second. being accepted. Michael Carmichael. No. Blair Swain. No. David Hudson. No. Pamela Phoenix. Yes. John Landis. Aye. By a vote of uh, three to two, the uh, item is, is approved. Thank, thanks. Uh, no. No, I mean, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? Three, three, it's three to two. Three to two denied. Three to two denied. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, any, any, uh, any further discussion? Any further discussion? Uh, now we, uh, we're moving on to uh, Platts, uh, Consent Platts Group uh, B, uh, Caleb, a Consent Platts Group A, Caleb. Yes, uh, for con consent flats group A, all um, all comments have been addressed for these these two flats F twenty three zero eight six Altamira edition and F twenty two one twenty eight Britain P Brookshire subdivision, and staff recommends approval of, of consent flats group A. Uh, are there persons here who'd like to speak on on these flats? If not, is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve consent flats group A. Second. Motion been made and seconded to approve. Any, uh, consent plats group A, any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, consent plats group B, uh, the following applic plat applications do not comply with the ap approval uh, criteria. Is that still the case, uh, Caleb? That is Kyle? correct. Um, that's for F23087 DEF Homes, F23093 South Park Shopping Center, and F23090 Richardson subdivision. Those plats do not meet the criteria for approval and staff recommends denial of consent plats group B. Mr. Chairman, I move we uh, deny the <coughs> consent group B. Are the, are the persons here who like to speak on any of these plats? If not, the motion is uh, to deny. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Consent plats group B are, are uh, Denied, and we, we adjourn. 